Okay, let's start with yesterday's trades and current positions. So these tries, I've been talking about this one for a while. And I did trade it. I bought 30,000 shares here in the low twos, 208, 207. And I used uh, 199 as my stop, which was the previous day's close. So it was a very easy stop out. And then here, when you took out the opening range highs to 20, I added another 10,000 shares. So I was long at 40,000 shares, about, I think it was about 213 average or something like that. So I had a pretty good, decent position. I sold 10,000 shares on the way up to 240s, 250s, 260s. Then I did kind of add up here because I thought this thing was going to go to 3 intraday. But I st got stopped out of those ads. I lost about 2,000 on those ads. And then I got stopped out of the rest of my 30,000 shares down here when it failed VWAP intraday. And I'm really not happy about this one. Uh, it did a <laughs> really big, big shakeout, almost went red. I started building back my position here, late day, a couple hours into the close. I got back 10, 15,000 shares, but it got stopped out again, took another, I don't know, $1,000 loss or something like that on those ads. And then into the close, this one perked up, and I got back 15,000 shares. <clears throat> and after hours, the PR it was kind of expected PR that they, they are done with uh, selling the, the shares. They've sold, I don't know, how many million shares, about 20, 30 million shares in the past month or so. And the stock instantly ripped from pretty much 250 to 380. And I had my 15,000 shares, and I probably would have added if I had been on my computer when the PR came out, I, could have, I probably would have added 10, 15,000 shares here below 270, but I, I saw it here when I uh, came back to the computer and I instantly sold some and sold some up here. I still have, out of those 15,000 I held overnight, I still have 10,500 shares. So let's look at the next one. Fannie Mae had it for a couple of days, looks good so far. I tightened up my stop to 406. This one is unrelated. I say char. Um, tested this uh, range it had for the past two weeks. Held very well. And uh, closed inside the range. I think another two, three days of sideways action. And this will be a prime candidate for another breakout towards 20. Ku held up really well. It's kind of flagging on the 60 minute chart. If you can go side this a few more days and then break out, I'm willing to add to it. CNX, I did cover a tiny bit today on this washout. I'm still looking for a breakdown. Now, now another minor stock, this veil actually broke down today, uh, sorry, yesterday, from this range that I've been talking about. But the CNX held up better. Tesla tried to break down. I did cover a tiny bit. Tightened my stop to this 255. And I still think this thing could wash another five, maybe even 10 bucks before earnings. Goldman Sachs, I tried it, took a small swing short, but the market uh, firmed up, so I, I just covered it for pretty much break even. I was thinking maybe it can break down this 230 area, maybe, maybe it can you know, fade 5 10 bucks. VNR, I got stopped out of it yesterday, my last shares. I got in low 80s and most of my sales were around this dollar area, so I made about 20 cents average, 25,000 shares. So that was overall close to 5,000 bucks on this trade, which is kind of nice considering I was in half size to begin with. EMES still have it faded intraday, just like the day before, and then it closed strong. So I'm probably gonna use this 1685 area as my stop. 
or maybe 16. Yeah, yeah, probably mid high 16s. Okay, let's see. Did I miss it? Yes, YRX is one. I tried it again. I'm 0 for 3 on this one. Thankful I didn't do 50,000 shares like I did last time. It took me two days to get out. Um, again, you know, you see these volume spikes, but none of, and these price spikes, but never has followed through. I'm thinking, you know, one of these days, this thing is gonna go. Look at the daily chart, or, or the 60 minute chart. L 60 min um, low, uh, higher lows all the way. Nice le range, you know, one of these days, if it breaks out of this 31, 32 cent area with volume, this thing is gonna go to 50, 70 cents, maybe a dollar or something. You know, this, this mainly this one chat room and Twitter account is trying to push it. Uh, some kind of a Trump or a security play or whatever, it doesn't really matter. What matters is when the momentum comes, I wanna be long. Let's see, this one I'm just stalking, probably needs to go up another 50 cents a buck and get over a million in volume before I'll be interested. Chainog still just watching it. Probably needs to build this range for another few days before I'm willing to go long or short. Uh, Goldman Sachs, I'm still watching it. There probably will be no trade on this thing tomorrow, but uh, sorry today. But um, yeah, Veil already broke down. I did not trade it, even though in hindsight maybe I should have shorted the opening range lows and just held it for a swing trade and maybe covered it high nines or something, but we'll see. PULM, now this was my main watch going into yesterday, but they had an offering in pre-market, I think the offering price was 250 so oh, not happy about this one. Not happy about it at all. This 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 would have been, you know, if this thing, I think it was in the near fours in af in pre market, and you know this thing could have easily gone to 455 if there was no offering. But yeah, this could have been a nice one. But now I'm just taking it off radar. Okay, long setup. Many many things I had in the previous video I removed it I re removed them because they all broke down. These are some of the names that held up nicely. I'm just gonna go through them really really fast. What I'm basically looking for is breakout on volume on all of these charts. This one has a catalyst. They have a deal with Amazon, so you know the volume is pretty good. It's a very thinly traded stock, and now there has been liquidity since this PR and. It's just flagging, you know, next leg up, this thing could have go up two, three bucks, four bucks, very fast. Recent IPO needs to shut up. This one I'm just stalking. Looks good. Looks really good. You know, biotech and the market, everything was weak yesterday, and this one just held up like a champion. Higher lows, and then it has a range here. Really good looking flag. This one, just talking. Most of these I've already talked about before. ORX tried to break down but held the 20 day and closed inside the range. And I've already covered it before. Looks good. Twilio I talked about before. So there are some new additions. This AQXP, nah, I'll remove it. Ah, uh, this one is too thin, but I'll keep it in case some big volume comes in. Okay, let's see. These, now this ES, ES, I'm looking for a long today. Uh, hopefully it goes sideways for a few more days, but looks good. It's big, big volume. The float has traded, I don't know, five five times or so the past two sessions so this thing can very easily go to 253 bucks if it gets going mm, Kala you know this thing had a collaboration PR with Inky INCY 
or insight. Uh, big, big volume. I think it's the biggest volume this thing has had in its lifetime. Traded its float basically, and you know, I mean, this thing could keep going. I think if it starts taking out this 710, 725 area. Uh, if you're willing to hold it for a few months, this thing could get going to 10, 12 or something. Uh, because, yeah, it's a pretty, you know, they got 53 million in upfront, which is basically half their market cap, so the stock was up 50%, so that makes sense, but, you know, can keep going. Arches, yeah, it looks like it's gapping down in pre-market, or, no, actually, it's kind of on uh, break even. Any pops to like mid sixes or something could be a short. They're basically wa waiting to price the offering. Dries, uh, I'll be looking to long it intraday again. I, I think this thing can go to low mid, maybe no mid fours, maybe even five bucks or something. It can go. And th at the end of the day, it's a piece of shit. It's probably gonna fade back to low twos within a week or two but yeah if i see a good setup i'll be i'll be there uxy another trade i did yesterday i, I kind of chased it i bought it here when it took out this first um, opening range uh, when it took out the opening range highs basically the first 30 minute candle here uh, well, actually, it's a 60-minute candle, but the first 60-minute candle is only 30 minutes. Uh, I bought it here, and so it was big chase, considering I saw it here in the high 25s. So that's when I should have bought it. But I was looking for a dip, which I didn't get, so I <laughs> bought it here, chased, and I lost like a couple of grand on it. Max, this is a Mexico wall play. They are trying to get in on the Mexican wall. They built uh, a wall in Israel before, so they, they know how to build walls and fences and stuff. And it's just purely up on speculation. They haven't got the deal yet. But these guys, you know, this thing, you look a couple of weeks from now, it's going to be at 15 bucks. So I'll, I'm still looking at it. Um, I did trade it intraday. I, I took a starter position on dips, but I got stopped out near the in, in the 690s when it broke out late day, and then it just rebounded back. I'm um, I'm looking to buy it again in the 730s or something. Hopefully, it can go sideways for three, three, five, ten days. And these ones, this one has some kind of PR. These ones, uh, and this is another one had an upgrade. I'm just looking at them. Nothing special. Okay, let's see. PNL. So this is uh, my UVXY trade. I lost, actually lost 2400 on it. Uh, Max lost 1400. LGCY, which I got in at in on Thursday, I think, or Friday, Thursday, I, you know, my big mistake on this one was I did too much size. I had 20,000 shares, and this is a stock that trades like three, 400,000 shares on average per day. <sighs> so I had a hard time getting out. I, I could have, I, I mean, my problem was that I sat on the offers, it faded out of the gate. I sat on the offers, I got filled on like 3,000 shares on offers in the mid-240s, and then it just tanked another 10 cents, and here in the low 230s, I was like, fuck, this is just getting expensive, so I just hit the bids in the low 230s, and then it rebounded back to mid-240s, and yeah, it was just hard to get out. So I had probably $1,500, $2,000 in slippage on this thing. So I almost, yeah, I lost almost five grand on it. And uh, this is, I get dries, I was actually, this is taken about an hour before it closed. So I was actually up 15 grand on dries, 15 or 16 grand before I, it, it faded back and stopped me out the intraday. This is uh, when I started building back my position. 
slowly, slowly, 5,000 shares at a time. And this is uh, in after hours, after the PR was released on Dries, and I already sold some. So yeah, if it hadn't stopped me out, I would have gone, uh, I, I would have had uh, probably at least, tw uh, instead of 15,000 shares, I would probably have at, had at least 20, 25, maybe even 30,000 shares when the market closed, but again, I, I was, I got too defensive. I didn't trust the name. I thought it was just going to slam back down. Um, but instead they released the PR, so had a nice run. So yeah, they did a masterful job of shaking people out midday. And that's it.